to follow along, download projects and footage from our training area at BorisFX.com. In this video, we'll talk about how to use Mocha Vegas to make your shaky footage look smooth and how to use stabilization as an artistic effect. There are two ways you can use the planner tracking data from Mocha to help stabilize your footage. Let's take a look at our first example clip. I have a shot with a nervous shaky camera movement that I think really sells the scene. However, creative directions have a tendency to change, and for any reason, you might need to have this shot completely rock steady. Does it mean that you have to go out and reshoot it? Well, no, if you know how to use the mocha properly. But why can't we use the native stabilizer? Most default host stabilizers work mostly as drag and drop effects, and you don't really have much of control. It's good to have a tool for quick and dirty solutions, but it won't quite work for us today. Mocha stabilization workflow is based on planner tracking. It allows us to choose a specific plane or area that we want to stabilize around to get a controllable, predictable result. This is a perfect clip for showing you how to do that. So let's apply Mocha to our clip and dive right in. The tracking won't be any special here. All pixels in the scene, well, except this woman, of course, generally moves in one direction and this whole wall is basically the same plane, so we can draw our shape anywhere on this wall. However, I won't recommend doing that on the very edges of the frame, because if you take a closer look, you may notice that this clip has some amount of lens distortion, which tends to introduce more errors in tracking. I select the rectangular mask tool and draw a large shape staying closer to the center, like this. Although this shot looks like it has no perspective changes, in fact, it does. They are just so small that it might be hard to notice. So I'm going to enable the perspective track to take that in count and get the best possible stabilization result at the end. Let's give our layer a proper name and start the track. All right, the tracking looks good to me, and I can close mock. Now, in this first example, I would be using picture-in-picture -picture effect again to apply my stabilization. But how would I tell Vegas that I want to specifically stabilize the shot and not use the data to add some kind of insert? Well, that's what this invert checkbox is for. Now, pay attention, this is an important step. If you're gonna be using picture-in-picture -picture for stabilization, you have to have this invert checkbox toggled on before you click on create track data. Otherwise, the data won't be populated properly. Now that we have the data, let's hit apply expert. But now that I go to the motion tracking transfer menu, you may notice that there is no picture in picture effect listed. So how do I apply it? The trick is that if you want to transfer the data to the clip itself, you need to have the picture-in-picture -picture effect already applied on the clip. So I would search for that in the video effects window, drag it over my clip, and set the scale back to one. Now I can go back to the motion tracking dialog and choose the picture-in-picture -picture option from the list. After you click on it, it may look like nothing has changed. But if I play the footage, you see that our clip is rock steady. But now that the clip is stabilized, you'll get these black borders coming in. One way to fix this is to zoom into the shot until these areas become invisible. Obviously, we will lose some of the resolution, but that's the price you have to pay to fix things in post. To do that, you can either use the track motion feature in Vegas Pro to reposition and adjust the scale of your clip. But track motion may not be the best option, because it also affects all the other clips on the same track, and you may not particularly want that. Instead of track motion, here's another thing that you can do. Open event effects for your clip, and change the order of how the effects are applied. I would click and drag on pan and crop, 
and put it after picture-in-picture effect. Then I go inside, and by holding Ctrl key and dragging this corner, I can easily zoom in until those black borders become invisible. Now I scrub through the timeline to check whether this amount of zooming is enough. By using Pan and Crop, we are applying changes only to this particular event. And this is what we get. Perfect steady shot without the jelly effect. However, with this explicit shot, there is one more trick that we can do in order not to sacrifice the resolution. Remember our first frame is a reference frame, and all other frames are stabilized around that. So in theory, I can use parts from that frame to use it kinda as a patch and overlap those black areas that appears after stabilizing. I just need to turn my first frame into a freeze frame. First, I would go into the pan and crop setting of the clip and restore it to its default state. Then I would duplicate my clip and remove both mocha and picture in picture effects. In order to turn my clip into a freeze frame, I should do the following. Right click on a clip and in the Insert Remove Envelope menu, choose Velocity. Then place your playhead on the first frame of the clip and right click on this green line. Choose to set 0% velocity. Cool, our clip has turned into a freeze frame. What I do next is I need to create another track on our timeline and put my freeze frame clip underneath the stabilized one. Now if I play back them both, instead of black gaps, you would see some parts of that freeze frame revealing. But this border is still kinda noticeable, so we can take that one step further by adding some feathering. Let's get back to the Mocha Vegas effect on the top clip. Choose the rectangular mask again and draw another big spline that covers most of your frame except the borders. Let's call that mask and link this layer to the wall track. The bigger shape now moves in exact same way as the smaller one, so we don't need to retrack it and can get back to Vegas. I would go to another frame where that edge is visible, enable my mat, and then adjust the feathering by looking at this border that we already can barely see. Boom! Now there is a zero chance that anyone would ever notice that something has been done here. Let's check the before and after in full resolution. Another scenario would be is when you want to stabilize around a specific object in your scene. This is what's commonly known as locked on stabilization. I'm sure you've seen this kind of effect in some famous commercials, music videos, or dancing TikToks. So here I would try to do the same thing and stabilize around women's earphones. Keep in mind that if you're shooting your footage specifically for this effect, you have to shoot it with a much wider framing because we're going to lose a huge chunks of the image at the edges. That being said, let's head over to Mocha. The tracking stage itself would be the same as for any other regular track. Notice that while she's running, her hair occasionally covers the earbud. And this is where we meet another benefit of using Mocha for achieving this effect. If you would try to do the same thing with Point Tracker, you would have to constantly reposition your tracking region as your subject becomes obscured. Well, with Mocha, you just exclude this area. So I already made the simple mat to mask your hair that looks like this. And now I would draw another shape around her head to do the actual track. And of course I need to put this layer below the hair mat and let's rename that to ear track. Then I enable my surface and place the center of it right in the center of the earbud. As for the tracking parameters, I would leave only translation and the scale. Translation is really the only one that we need, but I also leave the scale enabled to compensate for the camera zooming that we have at the end of the shot. So all is set up, let's start the process.
The track looks good to me, and center of the surface stays in place through the whole range. We can close Mocha and get back to Vegas. This time, we are gonna apply the data in a different way. I expand the tracking data menu and generate the data for the ear track. Pay attention that I did not toggle the invert this time. We are fine to export the data straight away. Now in the motion tracking dialog, you may see that there is an option in the dropdown called freeze motion effect. Once I click that, you'll immediately see the change in the image preview. The Vega stabilization effect has appeared in the effects chain. The cool thing about applying the data through the Vega stabilization effect is that you have a couple of additional parameters if you switch your user view to professional. From here, you can choose whether you want to have a maximum smoothness that is called freeze motion or just to smooth your shot to a certain amount. Notice that while I'm adjusting the smoothness, the zooming parameter is also being adjusted automatically. So we don't have to fit that by eye as we did in the previous example. We can also easily adjust which exact frame should be our reference frame. It is easier to explain what does it mean if I temporarily disable the auto zoom and set it back to zero. When the reference frame is set to zero, our first frame of the clip is being untouched and all other frames in the clip are being stabilized around that one. But we can easily change that and set any other frame to be the reference one if we need that. We just need to find the right value. So now I've set it to be the last frame and let's take a look. To get rid of the black borders, I would turn on the auto zoom back. If you don't quite like the positioning of the frame, you can easily adjust that by going into the additional translation settings and offset the position by moving this marker. So now I would set my headphones to be right in the center of the frame. And here is our final effect. Let's summarize. If you want to stabilize around a large area and have a rock steady camera, apply the inverted mocha data as picture in picture effect. And if you want to lock to a specific object, or you just want to make your footage look a bit smoother, utilize the mocha data through the Vega stabilization effect. There is one more thing you need to remember. Stabilization does not eliminate rolling shutter and motion blur. If you have an extremely shaky shot that you'll try to stabilize, these artifacts will become even more noticeable because of the locked picture frame position. In these cases, you would have to find the balance between the steadiness and shakiness so that it would still look somewhat natural. And Vegas smoothing parameter control makes it easy to find the value that would fit the best. And here we come to the end of today's video. I hope this has made things clear for you, and I invite you to try it yourself with the project available down in the description. My name is Elizabeth Postel for Boris Facts. Thanks for watching.